Bam! Mr. Taru, in this video we're going to do three examples calculating probabilities, uh, basically something you'd be seeing more than likely in your statistics class. We're going to be calculating probabilities within a normal distribution. In the description you'll find timestamps to skip ahead to any one of the three parts of this lesson. You'll also find links to old lessons uh, where I go uh, more in depth into the mathematics and what's going on with uh, each of these examples and beyond. I have a whole playlist for statistics. Now a normal distribution. Uh, you may recognize that as this sort of bell curve shape. Well, be careful. Not every bell curve is a normal distribution. There are other bell curves that have more areas in the tail than a normal distribution will have that are going to be uh, called T distributions or T curves. So um, we have this normal distribution though that is in the shape of a bell curve and what defines whether or not data is following a normal distribution or not is if it follows the empirical rule where you have some mean in the center of your unimodal and um, symmetric distribution where if you go to the left or the right so plus or minus one standard deviation uh, then you're going to be withholding approximately this is just an approximation rule 68 percent of all of your data um, within that population. Um, and if you go plus or minus or left or right two standard deviations away from the mean, then you're going to be holding approximately 95% of your data. And if you go to the right plus or left minus three standard deviations, you're going to be uh, therefore withholding approximately 99.7% of all of your data. And this bell curve you know, do, does uh, go on forever uh, in each direction. The number line or the x-axis, if you will, is basically acting as an asymptote. So you can have a piece of data that's three or four or five, um, six standard deviations away from the mean. It just becomes very, very unlikely. Shorthand notation for your normal distribution is a capital N, parentheses. Uh, we're going to have a couple of numbers in here separated by a comma. The first number represents the mean of that distribution, um, and the second number represents the standard deviation. Now you might see an X and an S of X here. Uh, this is a population mean and a population standard deviation. Um, now if I set this mean to be zero and this standard deviation to be one, well now this represents what's called a standard normal distribution, which is basically um, your distribution of z-scores. Now, I don't know if you're looking at this video as a review or starting from scratch, so I'm just going to try and quickly do this. A z-score is basically what you find when you uh, make your data fit within this standard normal distribution. There is really only one pure shape for a normal distribution, that mean of zero and standard deviation of one following the empirical rule. Then if you are, again, using some other types of problems, working maybe with a standard uh, error of the mean, you'd be moving into something called a T distribution. But z-score equals x minus mean um, over standard deviation, and the units of measure for z-score is going to be um, the number of standard deviations away that the statistic is away from the mean. And by the way, for standard deviation, the definition of standard deviation basically is <clears throat> an average distance each piece of data is from the mean. And I have lessons kind of explaining that further and how it is calculated. So getting this out of the way, all three of our examples are going to be built off of this initial story. The age L in years of a dog can be modeled by a normal distribution. So here uh, you're being told that we're going to be working with a normal distribution within these problems. And in symbols, this variable of L, which we're representing the age of a dog, again, follows that normal distribution with a mean of seven and a standard deviation of three, just in symbols what these words say. So we're looking at a bell curve whose center is, you know, equal to seven. And we're going to be in part A, seeing here. Find the probability that a dog selected at a random is uh, at least three years old. Okay, so you're picking one dog out of a population, and we're going to determine what's the probability of that dog being three years old. And that's not the same three as our standard deviation. So, which maybe was not such good planning on my part writing this problem, but we have a three here. We have a population mean age of seven years for these dogs. Of course, if this were, if the 
this is running along the x-axis, a value of 3 is going to be to the left, and we want to find, based on the wording of this problem, that the probability <clears throat> that L is at least, so 3, or greater. That L representing uh, the age of um, a dog. Okay. <clears throat> We're being told, and we're going to use normal calculations for this data. That means that the answer between this symbol is going to be equal to the answer of this symbolism. But while, as far as actual numerical wise, uh, these are going to have the same value, they do not really represent the same thing. This is the probability that the age is at least 3, and this is the probability that the age is more than 3. Now, the reason why these have uh, the exact same answer in terms with, of working with the normal distributions and this little z-score formula here, finding the areas under the curve. And this is the area that we're about to find. Is <clears throat> we're working with this, we're modeling this situation with a continuous random variable, meaning that there's a, there's not, it's not a discrete a random variable setting where you can count the number of specific outcomes. So the probability that x is exactly equal to 3, or l, excuse me, that the age of some dog is exactly equal to 3, is going to be equal to 0 in this sort of mathematical model that we're going to use to estimate these, you know, say if you will, actual probabilities. Because that would be one specific age of 3 out of an uncountable number of outcomes, um, you know, using this as a continuous random variable over an infinite number of possibilities. That's how I'm saying that the answer to the probability that L is equal to 3 is equal to 0. Now, while these um, two, two uh, notations here how, would give the same numerical answer, you want to make sure if you want to get full credit on your question that you match that symbol correctly to the wording of your problem. Okay, how do you calculate this? Well, if you're doing it sort of like old school, you're going to calculate the z-score, which is going to be, okay, the, the age of the dog we're interested in is 3, the mean age is 7, the standard deviation for the age of these dogs, as stated in the problem, is equal to 3. This comes out to be negative 4 over 3, or approximately negative 1.33, and then just repeating, so I'm going to round this off to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so if you find a dog um, in this population where the average age is 7 and the standard deviation of 3, if you find a dog that is 3 years old, and that is 1.33 standard deviations to the left of the mean, which is 7. Now that um, we have this idea here that z is equal to negative 1.33, what we're going to do is we're going to find the probability that we find some value of z that's greater than or equal to negative 1.33, the standardized value that correlates to the actual age of 3. And one way you can do that is to just use a, I'll pop it up over here, a z-score table or a normal distribution table and just work with the table maybe uh, that's in your textbook or that's given to you um, on a test. And those tables are always shaded to the left. So a table would only be able to give you this area to the left of 3, but since we want the area to the right, we're going to have to subtract from 1, because this is a density curve, and by definition, uh, density curves have an area of 1. So the table would only be able to tell us the area to the left. We want to find the area to the right, so we're going to do 1 minus this little area over here, which comes out to be approximately 0 0.092, which is equal to 0 0.0. 908. So if you need to write your summary statements in, um, in an in-context sentence, then the probability that we choose, um, randomly choose a dog, the probability that dog is at least three years old is 90.8% probability. Now, that's how I taught working with these questions for years, uh, old school, using tables, working with the z-score calculation. But a lot of tests now don't give you the opportunity, they don't give you a table to use. So how would you answer the same question in terms of using your calculator and a command called norm CDF? Well, 
if you uh, want to find a calculation that way, uh, norm CDF is going to find that area within that distribution, and it's norm for normal distribution, and CDF or cumulative distribution function, or it's going to accumulate all the area to either the left of 3 or to the right of 3. Now, we can do 1 minus with that idea that we found the c-score, which is negative 1.33. We can do 1 minus norm cdf. And when you type this into your calculator, if it's not asking you, like if it doesn't come up with a wizard to help you type in the numbers, you're going to put in the left bound, boundary of this area you're interested in, the upper bound of the area under the curve which we want to find, the mean and the standard deviation. Well, one way you could do is 1 minus norm CDF. Uh, maybe put in like a negative, because if we want to find the, uh, if we're thinking about a 1 minus, like that number that we got out of the table, this curve goes to the left forever. It's like a negative infinity, or you can just put in like negative 999999, some big number uh, in your calculator. For symbolism, well, we're going to write negative infinity, but again, you can write like negative 999,000. You're going to find the area up to the value of negative 1.33. The, if you're going to be working with a z-score, which is taking out the units of measure, which is years old, and using standard deviations away from the mean, your mean is 0, and your standard deviation is 1. Now, <clears throat> if you want to do this question without going through the process of the z-score calculation and finding that z-score, then you could actually work with the mean and standard deviation that's given to you in the number and say 1 minus norm CDF, negative infinity, 3, mean of 0, uh, excuse me, mean of 7, and standard deviation of 3. Or, you know, I'm telling you that you can type in the left and the upper bound. And unlike th saying, oh, I'm going to use my calculator and get uh, values out of the table um, or out of my calculator just as if I were pulling them out of the table, you can just ask the calculator to give you the area from the right, you know, from 3 to the right side, off until basically infinity, and say norm CDF, negative 1.33, infinity, and then, you know, if you want to work with that z-score value, then your mean is 0 and your standard deviation of 1. If you don't want to take the time to run through that z-score calculation, though it's simple, it takes up time on, say, a time to test, you can do norm CDF 3, and again, I'll, I'll type this in like I'm going to show you how to type it in your calculator in a second. Just put in a big number, uh, like 999,000, uh, and then a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 3. And that's going to come out to be the probability that L is greater than or equal to 3 is approximately equal to 0.9088. If you're using a z-score chart and not your calculator, using this rounded off um, value for z, which is um, negative 1.33, then from the t-table, you'd probably get something around like 0 0.9082. Okay, I'll put in a little snippet on how to use your calculator to show you that uh, typing in those values, but let's move on to then part B right now. No, 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 no. For our second question, what age represents the 80th percentile for dogs? In other words, how old would a dog need to be such that we would understand that 80% of all dogs are going to be that age or younger? Well, again, we have that normal distribution with the mean of 7, and now we're going to find some value of x such that the area to the left of that value in the normal distribution is that area is equal to 0.0. .0 0.8, or what's the probability that your age is less than or equal to x is equal to 0 0.80? Well, you can go to that table, go inside that body of the table, get as close as you can to point 0 0.80, and then go to the left and up, and find that estimated uh, z-score. And you'll probably get uh, that z is equal to 0 0.84. I hope, and then you work through that calculation of, okay, my z-score is 0 0.84, that's going to be equal to some statistic, 
minus the mean of 7 over a standard deviation of 3. Now, if you multiply both sides by 3 and add by 7, you're going to get x that is, uh, x is approximately equal to um, 9.52 years. But the purpose of this video really is to kind of bring in the use of the calculator, which my students now take a test working with normal distributions and they are not given a z-score table. So how would you use this with your calculator? Well, the command is inverse norm. So you're going to go to your second distribution window and look for inverse norm. And now when you type this into your calculator, it's not going to ask you for four numbers. It's only going to ask you for three. What's the area to the left of the number that you're trying to find? Well, that's 0 0.8. What is the mean? And you can put in 0 and 1 if you want this z-score value to come out, that, that z-value or the distribution of z-scores from that standard normal distribution. But if you're not working uh, inter inter interested in working with the z-score calculation formula, then just put in the mean and standard deviation given to you in the problem, which is 7 and 3. And that comes out to be, again, 9.52, a little bit less rounding here because we're not going to the nearest hundredth for the table, 5 years old. So, you know, working with the norm CDF and inverse norm uh, uh, commands in the calculator, speed the calculations up in sort of your basic, if you will, or um, statistics calculations that are within that normal distribution quite a bit. I am still bringing up, though, the use of this formula, z is equal to mean minus, uh, uh, the statistics, excuse me, minus the population mean over standard deviation, because we can certainly give you problems that... Uh, maybe just give you enough information to create a system of equations with um, a z-score value or a population mean or a standard deviation or maybe even a statistic where you have to know this formula or this formula, how it works, what the different variables represent, and maybe need to set up a system uh, of equations to solve a particular problem. This video is only focused on finding areas within the curve so we can answer probability questions based, of that, based out of that normal distribution. And now we see that norm CDF and inverse norm uh, really speed up those calculations, but you still cannot forget the basics. Sometimes you just simply have to use them. Part three coming up right now. And for part three, we have 10 dogs are independently selected at random. Find the probability that at least eight dogs are at least three years old. Now, do you recognize a little bit of a difference between the wording of this third part and the previous two? It's not talking about specifically a range of ages that a dog can take on. Uh, it's about dealing with 10 dogs. Now, if I said something like 10 dogs are chosen, what's the probability that the average age of those 10 dogs is, say, over, I don't know, four years old or less than two years old or more than eight years old? Uh, that would be something requiring the use of the central limit theorem, which is beyond the scope of this lesson. Again, a link of a video for that, a lesson for that, is in the description. This is a different type of problem where we're not working with the average age of 10 dogs. We're using the fact that we have looked at or randomly selected uh, 10 dogs, and we're just going to be considering whether you have a certain number of those dogs that are either at least three years old or not. That's all we care about. Is the dog at least three years old? Tying it back to part A where we found the probability that L, the age of a dog, um, can take on a value of three or more, which was 90.88% or has a probability of 0 0.9088. So part C goes back to part A. And be careful. This is really where students kind of get stuck and, and struggle with statistics is not the mathematics. It's usually now that we have the aid of calculators and computers really pretty basic, it's the language. You just went from a normal setting to a binomial setting. What is a binomial setting? Well, there's two outcomes, a little bit of bonus content here. Uh, there's two outcomes. That is going to be whether or not the dog is at least three years old or not. A set number of observations. That is the fact that we're going to be looking at 10 randomly selected uh, dogs and then looking at the basically the number of them, uh, which are at least three years old. Constant probability. We're going to use that probability of 0.9088 that we found in part A for the dog being at least three years old and independent so that the age of one dog randomly selected does not affect the probability um, 
or the age of the next dog that is randomly selected. And again, we're doing this even though I threw in a little bit of formula work and table work uh, just to make sure that you need to know that you need to be aware of that. Uh, with our binomial uh, work here, we're going to work with just that calculator and we're going to work with something called a binome CDF binomial setting cumulative distribution function. The first number is going to be uh, the number of observations or trials. The second number is going to be the probability of success. And the third number is going to be K, or sort of that value that we're, that we're concerned with. So we're going to be uh, letting X equal the number of dogs at least three years old. And now that we have our variable defined, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the probability that x is, well, if 10 dogs are randomly selected, the probability that at least 8 of those dogs. So the probability that x is taken on a value that is at least 8. So we're looking at the probability that x is equal to 8, or 8 of the 10 dogs are at least 3 years old, or 9, or 10. Now, unlike the norm CDF, where I showed you that you could ask the calculator to give you the area to the left or the right of your specific uh, value or your statistic. Not all, but almost all calculators for the binomial setting count down. So what you're going to have to remember is, and think about that, I want to find the probability that 8 or 9 or 10 of the 10 dogs randomly selected are at least 3 years old. Well, the opposite of that, counting down, the opposite of finding 8, 9, or 10 is 7, 6, 5, down to 0 of the 10 dogs being uh, and having an age of at least 3 years old. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 7. Because the opposite of 8, 9, or 10 is, which is the probability we want, is 7, 9, uh, 7 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 of those dogs uh, meeting this age criteria that these are, <clears throat> these are complementary events. We're going to have to subtract the answer that we're probably only able to get from our calculator away from 1. The command for that is going to be 1 minus binome CDF. We're looking at 10 dogs. The probability that a dog randomly chosen uh, from this population is at least 3 years old from part A is 0 0.9088. And we're looking at 7 or fewer. Just realize I had that incorrect. I needed to include an equal sign there. Because again, the opposite of finding a probability of 8, 9, or 10 is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, now, that's going to come out to be 0 0.9441. From this population, where the average age is 10 with a standard deviation of 3 for these dogs, if you choose 10 dogs um, randomly, the probability that at least 8 of those dogs are at least 3 years or old, catching the fact that this is a binomial setting problem moving away from those normal distributions, is approximately equal to 0.944 or 94.4%. I'm Mr. True. Bam! Go to your homework.